be quiet. There's Lily Hines. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Lily, how's your ankle? Doing all right, I suppose. You suppose? <laughs> and she worked a nine-hour shift yesterday and... Uh, eight. All right. Okay, she was scheduled to work a nine-hour shift yesterday. And that, that was a good bit on that bum ankle. Because she's tough. <laughs> That's one word for it. <laughs> women have to be tougher is yeah what it is <laughs> amen <laughs> rudy how are you doing this evening i'm well thank you good My camera's jacked up here. Here we have really yeah, maybe there's a little better. Hey, Nancy. Hello. Out of curiosity, while I'm thinking about it, did that link work? I couldn't. I sent you an email I, or a text. I couldn't find any link. You couldn't do what? I couldn't find your link. It was on the bottom of that email I sent this morning. Oh, I didn't see that. Right at the bottom. It was what okay. it was in the email well, that had the bulletin in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. How's everybody else doing this evening? Good. 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 Okay, now I see it. Okay. Wait, we'll we'll try that. Nancy will try it next week and see if that link. Thank you for that. Yeah, hopefully that works and Somehow solves. Somehow I just didn't see it. Yeah. <clears throat> hopefully that hopefully. solves the issue. Thank you. Yeah. do what thought i heard someone say something all right all right good to see everyone tonight appreciate everyone um being being on here this evening let me go ahead and i'll go ahead and mute everybody and let's pray together please our Father in heaven, thank you for the day that you've given us. Thank you for the time of worship you gave us this morning, the rest you gave us this afternoon, and this time that you've given us this evening, that we can come together and study your word once again and think about it and apply it, think about how it applies to our lives. We're thankful, uh, of course, on this Lord's Day, as it comes to a close, we're, we are thankful that we can that we can bring this Lord's Day to a close. Um thinking about you and your son and thinking about about the sacrifice and what it calls what it calls for from us father please be with those that were mentioned this morning in the announcements um, be with be with Delilah as she travels keep her safe 
as she gets down to Florida and in the coming months, and we pray she returns here in a few months at, at that time. Uh, be with Sister Pat as she travels, get her home safely as well. Be with those who are facing upcoming appointments. Be with Al tomorrow with that appointment. We pray that it goes well. And be with Sister Nancy and the upcoming surgery. We're thankful that that's finally happening, and we pray that all goes well with that as well. Be with us tonight throughout this week. Keep us in your care always, and we do ask you to forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Me. Oh. All right. Make myself a little bigger. As I said, good to see everyone tonight. What we are going to be thinking about this evening, the, the title that I gave tonight's lesson is Paul's Lists. And it's one of the techniques that Paul uses where he just lists things. And it's different things that have happened to him. And he, he does it at least two times and perhaps a third time. It's a little different in the third one. But he has very different purposes for for the lists as, as we'll say as we'll see one of them is basically from before he obeys the gospel one of them is after he obeys the gospel and then the third one we'll look at is actually basically it's going through an acts as he does obey the gospel and it's it's basically what um what persuaded him if you will to to change so in thinking about these lists, the first one that we're going to look at is in Philippians chapter 3. In Philippians chapter 3, and we'll just start reading in verse 1, says, Finally, my brethren, uh, rejoice in the Lord, for to me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. So he's talking about the Judaizers. For we are of the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm more so. And then he gets, then he gets into the list. Um, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Uh, the King James, I count them as dung, as it is. So what's the purpose of the list here? Well, what he's talking about, he's talking about the things that he had given up for the Lord, those things that were gain to him, the advantages that he had in the law, the very things that the Judaizers highly esteemed. And, and that's, that's what it was. I mean, Saul of Tarsus, he's, he's from the right tribe. He's from the right sect, a Pharisee, Pharisee of the Pharisees, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, right? All those things, those things the Judaizers highly esteemed. He counted them as loss for the sake of Christ. They held no value to him. And what I would suggest in thinking about an application is if a part of being a Christian is to deny oneself, then what that means is we are also called to give up. And of course, we may not be a Pharisee. We, we may not be you know, taught at the feet of Gamaliel and things like that. But we have to ask ourselves, what, are, what, what have we given up for the Lord or what are we willing to give up for the Lord? Uh, we might think about, just for example, when Jesus talks about what will a man give in exchange for his soul? That's a question of giving up. The rich young ruler, that was a question of giving up. And, and Jesus, in this idea of giving up, of what he, what he did give up, what he was willing to give up, he's the ultimate example. When we look just earlier in Philippians, for example, in chapter 2, 
where it talks about, says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. And of course it goes on, but that made himself of no reputation. He emptied himself. And we think about what Jesus was willing to give up. And it calls us to ask ourselves, what are we willing to give up? Because the society that we live in, it is a consumption society, right? And it's just more, more, more. And Saul of Tarsus had the more. He had it. He had it in spades. And he was willing to give it all up. And so this is a picture of him before he becomes a Christian and what he was willing to give up for the sake of the Lord and for the sake of the gospel. And so we, we ask ourselves, what are we willing to give up for the Lord and for the sake of the gospel as well? The second list comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. In 2 Corinthians 11, it's where Paul recounts the things that he had suffered 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16 says, I say to you, let no one think me a fool if otherwise, at least receive me as a fool, that I also may boast a little. What I speak, I speak not according to the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many boast according to the flesh, I also will boast. The Judaizers had had some influence in Corinth, so Paul is somewhat dealing with the same, the same issues or the effects of the same issues. Verse 19, he says, you put up with fools gladly since you yourselves are wise. Uh, for you put up with it if one brings you into bondage. That's where you see he's dealing with the Judaizers. If one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face, right? All of these things as he goes on and he's, he's rebuking them. Verse 22, he says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So there it is. There's, there's a list. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, right? You have, I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant and stripes above measure and prisons more frequently and deaths often. And now we get into the list more, uh, at least the one we're considering in deaths often from the Jews. Five times I received 40 stripes minus one, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and tool and toil and sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches who is weak and I'm not weak, who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation. So it's a different kind of list than the first one. The first one was what he was willing to give up for the sake of, for the sake of the Lord. This list is what had happened to him after he obeyed the gospel. And this list is what he had suffered for the Lord not what he had given up per se, but what he was suffering, how he suffered now that he did follow the Lord. And so in thinking about this list, and, and we recognize what he says, he says, these things do not phase me, right? What comes upon me daily is my concern for the churches. He was thinking about the brethren. He wasn't thinking about himself, and so in that, of course, he's, he's also a, a wonderful example for us because he suffered mightily. And Jesus had said he was going to suffer. You remember when Jesus spoke to Ananias and the man who was going to end up baptizing Saul of Tarsus, going to end up baptizing Paul, and Jesus tells Ananias, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my sake. So Jesus had said he's, he's going to suffer, and Paul did suffer very much. He, he suffered. And so what that calls us to do is to ask, uh, ask ourselves, 
what are we willing to suffer for the Lord? Some of the things that that Paul mentions here, just as we think about applications, talks about his labors. He talks about rejection, rejection and, and dealing with, with Jews as well as false brethren. So he talks about rejection. He talks about weariness a good bit in that list. He talks about going without. And we might bring in another passage. I believe it's Philippians. I have learned how to be abased. I have learned how to abound. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that whether it was abasement or abounding, and there's specifically in 2 Corinthians where it's where it is the sufferings, it is the abasement. And he was willing to go through those things for a for a reason. I'll say this if 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 sufferings, if the things that we suffer succeed in drawing us away from the Lord, what we need to do is we need to take strength. We, we need to st take strength. We need to, you know, like, like the Lord talking to Job, gird up thy loins like a man. Um, and we need to recognize that the sufferings of this present world do not compare to the glories that await. And so we ask ourselves, what are we willing to suffer for the Lord? And, and Paul's list there, it's it's pretty heady list, honestly. And it's it's impressive. And I think it's it's somewhat meant to be. As he says, I was not overcome by these things. You know, there at the end, who's weak? I'm not weak. Who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation? And to just go through there, he had been beaten at mul multiple times. He talks about in deaths often. You remember one time they stoned him and left him for dead. And there are some people who speculate in, in that account or who, who think, and, and frankly, I'm one of them. It's based on this verse. It's not outside of the realm of possibility because what happens in that account when they stone him and leave him and all of a sudden the brethren come and basically he just stands up and dusts himself off and they go on. And I would suggest there was a miracle happening in that in that passage. Uh, I think you to look at it. The the stripes beaten with rods, the shipwrecks. Um, you can read about one of them when they when they shipwrecked in the Malta, in all of those all of those things, and it's they did not overcome him. Nope, he was willing to suffer all of these things for the sake of Christ, and what came upon him daily was his deep concern for all the churches. All right, the next list is in Acts chapter 22. So let's look over there in Acts 22, and this is basically what, basically the beginning of the trial, sort of. It's at least the, mm, the prelude, perhaps, if you want to put it like that. But in Acts 22, it says, brethren, he's been arrested for a little bit of context. He's been arrested and to look at the end of chapter 21, he's in Jerusalem. Eh, let me look down there at, at the end. He's arrested in the temple. And he asks the commander if he could speak to the people. And the commander says, can you speak Greek? Are you not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a rebellion, led the 4,000 assassins into the wilderness? And Paul says, to paraphrase, no, that's not me. I'm a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. If you're born in that city, you're a free man. Paul's going to use that. You're a citizen. You're a citizen of the Roman Empire. And so he's playing that card here. I implore you, permit me to speak. So when he'd given him permission, Paul stood on the stairs and motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great silence, he spoke to them in Hebrew. Hebrew was not the spoken language at the time. So all of a sudden, when they hear someone speaking, oh, he's, he's speaking to us in Hebrew. And their ears, their ears perked up at that, uh, at that as they heard him speak. So in chapter 22, hear my defense now. 
when they heard him speak in the Hebrew language, they kept all the more silent. And he says, I'm indeed a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, uh, taught according to the strictness of our father's law and was zealous towards God as you all are today. I persecuted the way to the death, binding and delivering into prisons, both men and women. It's also the high priest bears me witness and all the councils of the elders from which I also received letters to the brethren. I went to Damascus to bring in chains, even those who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. Now it happened. As I journeyed, I came near Damascus at about the at about noon. Suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me. So he's just recounting what happened to him on the road to Damascus and, and the things that, that happened. So as he goes through, talks about the conversation with the Lord, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you're persecuting. Those with him saw the light, they were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke. Paul says, Saul of Tarsus, what shall I do, Lord? The Lord said to me, arise, go into Damascus. There you will be told all the things which are appointed for you to do. And we know, of course, what Ananias told him to do. Why tarriest thou, arise and be baptized. Verse 11, though, since I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of those who are with me, I came into Damascus, certain Ananias, devout man according to the law, having good testimony, right? He comes in, um, Saul receives his sight. Verse 16, the verse I just quoted, arise and be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, when he returns to Jerusalem, he's in a trance. He was praying in the temple. And you have make haste to get out. The Lord says to him, make haste to get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. Uh, so I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprison and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, depart from me, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And then we see the people's reaction to all this. They listened to him until this word, and then they raised their voices and said, away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. So a little bit of a lengthier passage there, but to back up and in my notes, as far as, as the list verse 3. I'm indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus of Cilicia, brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of our father's law, and was zealous toward God as you all are today. That's seven or eight things, just boom, 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 boom. And I, I think the whole point of, of the list here is is basically Paul saying what caused him to change and as and to look at that list and as he lists the things that had happened to him he's basically saying i was just like you right there he is and the judaizers the pharisees they were coming after him and when paul as he's talking about it and he says, I persecuted this way to the death, verse 4, verse 5, as also the high priest bears me witness and all the counsel of the elders, from whom I also received letters to the brethren. Hey, and I, I know a significant amount of time has passed. Um, we're in Acts 22. He's He's been a Christian for a long time. But he's basically saying, you all know who I am. <laughs> you know who I was. I worked for you. There were, there were people there who probably remembered him. And it's like, check your records. I was as you are. That's basically his, his argument here when he talks about it. Granted, they may, they may not have been um, from Tarsus and enjoyed the privileges of being in Tarsus, but being brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. Paul wasn't the only one who was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. And, and he's basically saying, I was as you are, but something changed. And that's, that's basically his lesson with them, that something had convinced him 
that the way, and he speaks about the way, by the way, this is one of the passages, I pers verse four, I persecuted the way to the death. And he, he's saying, I was elite. I, he's saying, I was elite. And he gave all that up. And his argument seems to be, he's like, why would I do that? <laughs> why would I give all that up? Okay, in, in Philippians, when he's talking to Christians, and he talks about what he was willing to give up for the sake of Christ, but here he's not talking to Christians, he's talking to unbelievers. And he's saying, why would I give all that up? And he gives the reason as he starts talking about the Lord appearing to him. And it's like, this is what convinced me. This is, it's like the gospel is, the gospel had not been preached in a vacuum that he, they knew, they knew about Jesus. <laughs> they had heard, he had heard Stephen's sermon. Stephen's sermon had not persuaded him. But as he's a, as he's the chosen vessel and he's going to go on to become an apostle and you have the Lord speaking to him, right? And he's, that's how he meets the qualifications to be an apostle, a witness of the resurrection, a witness of the resurrected Jesus. And so he's just going through and he's, he's making this argument with this list. He's like, I, I was just like you guys are for them, you know? And he, and he changed. Needless to say, the crowd did not like the sermon too much at all. Um, why were they so, why were they so angry there at the end? Well, when he talks about when the Lord says, I'm going to send you to the Gentiles, they really didn't like that. <laughs> and that probably, they were probably already getting kind of irritated and probably getting kind of hot under the collar with some of the things that Paul mentions there at the end um, as, as he starts talking about, obviously, Jesus um, and the things that had happened at that time in 33 A.D., and he starts talking about, oh, you might remember that the Pharisees believed in the resurrection. Sadducees didn't. Pharisees did. And what's Jesus? He's the first fruits of the resurrection. And so all of a sudden when Paul says, I've seen the first fruits, I've seen the proof of the resurrection. This Jesus whom you crucified. <laughs> and... So he mentions that. He mentions the resurrection. If there are any Sadducees there, by the way, they really wouldn't have liked that. And then he starts talking about Stephen. And there is a big uproar over when Stephen was martyred. And so he, he talks about Stephen as well. And just, just as a side note, we might also mention they were they were not legally by Roman law. Um, there's a reason they delivered Jesus to Pilate, and it's because the Romans were not real keen on them exercising um, corporal punishment. They were not real keen on them executing people. That that was a, I believe that was against Roman law, <clears throat> but sometimes they just didn't care. And obviously, with Stephen's sermon, they didn't care. So all of a sudden, when you have this crowd and there's Jews, but there's also the commander, a Roman commander, and Paul's about to appeal to Caesar and Rome's about to get involved. And Paul kind of mentions, it's like, oh yeah, you guys did something you, you weren't supposed to, uh, even according to the Romans. So anyway, my point is just to go from talking about the resurrected Jesus to Stephen the martyr and then the Gentiles. And when they heard the Gentiles, they said, enough's enough. Enough's enough. Paul's trying to convince them. And he's trying to say, it's like, and I'm just, I'm just like you guys. I'm, I was like you guys are. But something changed. And that's, that's kind of the purpose, it looks like, of, of the list here. Uh, so three lists, what he gave up in our first point, what he, what he suffered, with our second list, and then this third list, why, um, why these things, why he was what he was, frankly. Uh, so I would encourage you, feel free to go ahead and take yourself off mute. The question that I had tonight is what sort of things might we have to give up or suffer?
what sort of things might we have to give up or suffer? And I will go ahead and take myself off the spotlight. And we still have about 10 minutes. So how would you answer that question? What sort of things might we have to give up or suffer? We might have to give up our families in order to continue our walk with Christ. Brenda says, and you, can you say that last part again, Brenda? We might have to give up our family. To, to continue our walk with Christ. You want to expound on that? or? Well, family can hold us back from our service to God. Um, you know, if we want to continue searching for heaven... You know, that's our priority. That's our goal. And we can't let anything else hinder us from achieving that goal. I think, you know, the verse that we, we quote it pretty often when Jesus talks about whoever comes to me and does not hate father or mother or son or daughter. And it's, we, we've got to put the Lord first. And, and if family... You know, if family tries to get in the way of that, if family tries to pull us away from the Lord and to to insert themselves as first place in our heart, uh, they're going to have to be made aware. It's like, nope, that that place does not belong to you. That place belongs to the Lord. And they're they're going to have to understand that. And if they don't understand that, that's that's on them but that's the reality of it. What other things might you say, what other things might we have to give up or suffer? Might have to give up our very lives. Yeah. Um, you hope it never happens in this country, but it certainly happens in other countries. Yeah. And There's, uh, It's po quite possible. You know, when I was a little boy, I would have said that it would never happened but now the way uh the people are i can see it yeah you know rudy do you think perhaps before we you usually how it happens before you give up your life is it fair to say before we're called to give up our lives usually the way it works is we have to give up our livelihoods possibly you know, and, and I think with that one, that that happens and always has happened, frankly. And it's just a question of just sure. question of money. Sure. And um, the, the choices that we have to make with our with our occupation, that there may be occupations that there may be jobs where we have to say, I got to find something else. Um and it's and it's like that that's the reality if if your boss demands that you work you know 24 7 if you if your boss treats you like a slave it's like listen if and and there may be if you have a choice about it you may be forced to make a hard choice Let, let's put it like that and you better choose the lord better choose the lord what else would, would y'all say? Might we have to give up or suffer? Someone, <laughs> just, just because of, just because I'm a preacher, I was talking with someone this morning, talking about another congregation over in Indiana that we were aware of, and um, made, made the uh, observation about a certain place. And I, I said, well, you know, when when a congregation develops a reputation for abusing preachers, don't be surprised when preachers don't want to go there. And the the point I was making was that, you know, Paul and and I would never I will not compare. Paul, Paul had been beaten <laughs> and it's like I, I don't know too many preachers who have been beaten for what they've preached literally but i do know preachers who have who have suffered and, and been been abused and you all know preachers elders and even brethren can you suffer at the hands of your brethren by doing what's right 
by, by doing what's right, you might think about, you know, one of the topics I know of church discipline. Mm -hmm. And when, when you take a stand for church discipline, according to scripture, can sometimes your brethren turn on you and, and it happens, it happens. And all of a sudden friendships, friendships, and sometimes even fellowship start, start faltering, if you will. And, and it happens. Um, I think ha really they, what they do is they put their emotions above the Bible is what happens. You know, their, their love for my lost cause brother here. Yeah. You shouldn't be mean. You know? <laughs> and um, I, I think one of the problems, cause I, I don't have a problem with being, with people being emotional as long as they're emotional in the right way. And what I mean by that, for example, when the Lord cleanses the temple and its zeal for thy house is eating me up. Mm -hmm. And if they're, if they're recognizing even emotionally, it's like, and I understand church discipline, just that topic, that's a hard topic. That's hard to do. It's hard to apply. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you don't get emotional, but you still have what you have, what scripture says, and the Lord loves those whom he chastens. So there's an emotional aspect to it. You have to channel it scripturally and, and we're doing it out of love. What other things would you say, might you add, um, things suffered, things given up? And I think sometimes for, um, younger people, especially, but, you know, you may be made fun of, um, you know, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Yeah. So you're not going to be perhaps part of the in crowd and, you know, in the past, uh, you know, considered a square maybe because you don't, you know, participate or do certain things. And, uh, and that's yeah. always difficult, you know, sometimes that's part of when, it. When, when all of your peers are going to some sort of extracurricular event and you say, we're having a gospel meeting at church and I want to go to the meeting at church, or, you know, or when, when your classmates are doing something, you know, Sunday night and you say, no, I want to be on zoom Sunday night with, with my brethren. When, when you start choosing the Lord's ways or when, when you simply start being recognized as a Christian, I, you know, and it's like, no, I don't believe in evolution. You know, I, I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe in living our lives in a worldly way. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And, and to Mark's point, and it's a good point, kids can be bullies and, and they can, they can easily start picking on you and, and see it as, um, see it as silly. Um, but of course we know what first Corinthians says, the wisdom of God is foolishness with the world. So we should not be surprised when the world calls us fools and we, frankly, we welcome it. It's like, that's fine. That means I'm on the right side. <laughs> I, I don't want to be on the world side. I want to be on the Lord's side. Anything else here in the closing minute or two? All right. Well, that's, that's everything I had. Hope everyone, hope everyone has had a good day. Hope everyone has a good week. Um, I guess I wasn't listening to the announcements closely enough this morning. I didn't realize that Delilah was leaving today. Yeah, right after church. <laughs> yeah. So hope she um hope she has safe travel. Was she driving all the way straight through? I don't know. They were stopping at Carissa's today. Okay. Gotcha. In Columbus. Okay. Then they were stopping in South Carolina before they went to Florida. Oh, okay. So they're breaking it up over a few days. All right. Well, she will be missed. It will be nice to have Pat should be back by this Sunday, shouldn't she? First, right. Right. The first, yeah. It's February 1st. That's Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Nice to have her back. All mm -hmm. right. Well, I hope everyone takes care. Hope everyone has a good week. Uh, we'll see you Wednesday. Appreciate you, you being on here tonight. All right. Y'all take care. <laughs>